Hey guys, it's Goofy Oop the Balls, and today I have for you guys an 80 kill gameplay on Advanced Warfare. But I did get this reverse boosting, and that's kind of what I want to talk about in this video. So, the last video I posted talking about reverse boosting and how to do it, that account that I made on that, I used that to try to get this gameplay. I figured I did all the work for the reverse boosting, I might as well try and keep playing and see if I can get a couple good games. And I got this ridiculous 80 kill gameplay, and I just had a stretch of a couple, like three or four games, where I just absolutely destroyed the other team. And honestly, it was the most fun I've had playing this game. If you combine all the fun I've had in the last month, Compared to the fun I had in those three or four games, I had more fun in those three or four games. And I don't know guys, it kind of just got me thinking, what's more important? To go out and play Call of Duty and have a lot of fun and get a lot of kills against kids who aren't your skill level? Or is it more important to go out there, play kids at your skill level, but you're going to have to try as hard as you possibly can just to do well? And it just really got me thinking about how there's some channels out there that do reverse boost, get these ridiculous gameplays and post them and you know their channels are successful and they're happy and having fun and there's also those channels out there who don't think reverse boosting is right and they just don't want to do it and they work their hardest go out there and play like 50 games just to get that one good game or that one decent game that they can use for a gameplay on their channel and I just it just doesn't make sense to me you know I get that a lot of channels out there are based on good gameplay but I just don't get why you wouldn't do this this reverse boosting I mean yeah maybe it's controversial but What's the point of going out there, playing the game for 6-7 hours just to get one good game, and not really have fun with it anymore? I mean, what's the point if you're not having fun? In my opinion, that's what everything should be about. If you're not enjoying it, then you shouldn't be doing it, and it's time to move on to something else. But anyway, stepping aside from that for a second, here's my question to my subscribers out there, and I guess anyone else watching this video. Would you rather see a gameplay where I go like 40 and 10, 40 and 15, where I'm trying my best, and that's the best gameplay I can get for you? Or do you want to see a gameplay where I go like 80 and 4 or something insane with a DNA bomb? And I'm having fun and I might be playing kids lower skill level than I am, but I'm really having fun and enjoying making that kind of video. And as a subscriber, is that what you want to see or do you want to see me trying my hardest to get that 40 and 15 gameplay? So let me know what you guys think about this down in the comments below because I'm really interested to hear in what you guys want to see from me as a subscriber to my channel. Because, I mean, I know what I would like to see from other channels, but I'm always curious to see what you guys want to see from my channel. So let me know. Okay, so back on topic, another thing I wanted to discuss was what's the difference between me jumping into a lobby and then just happening to be a bunch of bad players and I get a ridiculous gameplay, or me jumping into a lobby that I know is bad and I know has bad kids and I know I'm probably going to get a good gameplay against. I just, I don't see the difference. In all previous Call of Duty games, that's pretty much what it was. If you got into a good lobby, you did, and if you didn't, then you didn't, and you had a rough time. And you saw a lot of good gameplays on a lot of channels. But you know, a large majority of those gameplays were where people were playing against kids who didn't know how to play the game, or, or holding the controller upside down, or playing with one hand, or something ridiculous here. I mean, like you can see in the background right here in this gameplay, I'm just absolutely demolishing these kids. But I'm sure you've seen big gameplays like this on other channels, so what makes the difference here? Just because I'm playing against a bunch of bad kids by reverse boosting, or them by playing just a bunch of bad kids by pure chance? because they have the time and energy to go play 8 hours a day and find a good lobby like that, and I just don't have that. So really, what's the difference? That's one of my big questions. And another thing, a lot of people out there have the time and energy to go out and play a bunch of Call of Duty, and wait until skill-based matchmaking runs out, and they have to get placed in a lobby with people lower skill level than them, and they get that good game, but it just takes them a lot of time, and maybe they have the time to spend to do that. But then there's the majority of people out there who don't have that time to just keep playing until they find a good lobby. So what makes the difference between them, you know, finding a good lobby through reverse boosting or something else like that, and someone else just playing a bunch until they get a bad lobby? I just, it just doesn't make sense to me. And the other thing, the most important thing here that doesn't make any sense to me, is why people have to be all up in arms about it. I mean, in my opinion, if you want to do it, go ahead and do it. And if you don't want to do it, Go ahead and don't do it. It's it's fine. You shouldn't have to worry about what everyone else is doing. I mean, are you going to live by what everyone else is doing and arguing about what how they're doing is wrong and what you're doing is right so you can justify yourself? No, I don't think anyone wants to live like that. But I guess it's just the way Call of Duty has always been. The community has always been this way for Call of Duty. The second they think something needs to be patched, everyone's up in arms about it. Like the FMGs from Modern Warfare 3. Oh, those were overpowered and just everybody was up in arms about it. The second that got patched, they move on to something else. Like, oh, the ACR is overpowered and P7's overpowered. 
And I guess that's just the way the community works. Every time they find flaw in something, whether it be in other people or in the game, they just love to talk about it as much as they can and blow it out of proportion. So I don't know, guys. This is just me talking about a couple things I've been thinking about in terms of reverse boosting in the community. And, yeah, I was just giving you guys my opinion. So let me know what you guys think about all of this. You know, that question I asked all my subscribers about if you'd rather see me having fun doing ridiculous gameplays against bad lobbies or playing against tryhards, really working my butt off to get a decent game. And any other part about this commentary, just let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I'm really interested to hear what everyone has to say. And just wrapping up, if you guys like this video, really appreciate it if you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. This has been Goofy Goofed Balls, and I'll catch you guys all in the next video.